Section five of Child Harold's Pilgrimage by George Gordon Lord Byron. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Canto the Fourth, Part Two. Ninety nine. There is a stern round tower of other days, firm as a fortress, with its fence of stone, such as an army's baffled strength delays, standing with half its battlements alone, and with two thousand years of ivy grown, the garland of eternity, where wave the green leaves over all by time o'erthrown. What was this tower of strength? Within its cave, what treasure lay so locked, so hid? A woman's grave. One hundred but who was she the lady of the dead tombed in a palace was she chaste and fair worthy a king's or more a roman's bed what race of chiefs and heroes did she bear what daughter of her beauties was the heir how lived how loved how died she was she not so honoured and conspicuously there where meaner relics must not dare to rot placed to commemorate a more than mortal lot hundred and one was she as those who love their lords or they who love the lords of others such have been even in the olden time rome's annals say was she a matron of cornelia's mien or the light air of egypt's graceful queen profuse of joy or against it did she war inveterate in virtue did she lean to the soft side of the heart or wisely bar love from amongst her griefs for such the affections are a hundred and two perchance she died in youth it may be bowed with woes far heavier than the ponderous tomb that weighed upon her gentle dust a cloud might gather o'er her beauty and a gloom in her dark eye prophetic of the doom heaven gives its favourites early death yet shed a sunset charm around her and illume with hectic light the hesperus of the dead of her consuming cheek the autumnal leaf-like red a hundred and three perchance she died in age surviving all charms kindred children with the silver grey on her long tresses which might yet recall it may be still a something of the day when they were braided and her proud array and lovely form were envied praised and eyed by rome but whither would conjecture stray thus much alone we know metella died the wealthiest roman's wife behold his love or pride One hundred and four i know not why but standing thus by thee it seems as if i had thine inmate known thou tomb and other days come back on me with recollected music though the tone is changed and solemn like the cloudy groan of dying thunder on the distant wind yet could i seat me by this ivied stone till i had bodied forth the heated mind forms from the floating wreck which ruin leaves behind One hundred and five and from the planks far shattered o'er the rocks built me a little bark of hope once more to battle with the ocean and the shocks of the loud breakers and the ceaseless roar which rushes on the solitary shore where all lies founded that was ever dear but could i gather from the wave-worn store enough for my rude boat where should i steer there woos no home nor hope nor life save what is here Hundred and six then let the winds howl on their harmony shall henceforth be my music and the night the sound shall temper with the owlet's cry as i now hear them in the fading light dim o'er the bird of darkness's native sight answer each other on the palatine with their large eyes all glistening grey and bright and sailing pinions upon such a shrine what are our petty griefs let me not number mine Hundred and seven cypress and ivy weed and wallflower grown matted and massed together hillocks heaped on what were chambers arch crushed columns strown in fragments choked up vaults and frescoes steeped in subterranean damps where the owl peeped deeming it midnight temples baths or halls pronounce who can for all that learning reaped from her research hath been that these are walls behold the imperial mount tis thus the mighty falls a hundred and eight there is the moral of all human tales tis but the same rehearsal of the past first freedom and then glory when that fails wealth vice corruption barbarism at last and history with all her volumes vast hath but one page tis better written here where gorgeous tyranny hath thus amassed all treasures all delights 
that eye or ear heart soul could seek tongue ask away with words draw near 109 admire exult despise laugh weep for here there is such matter for all feeling man thou pendulum betwixt a smile and tear ages and realms are crowded in this span this mountain whose obliterated plan the pyramid of empires pinnacled of glory's gewgaws shining in the van till the sun's rays with added flame were filled where are its golden roofs where are those who dared to build hundred and ten tully was not so eloquent as thou thou nameless column with the buried base what are the laurels of the caesar's brow crown me with ivy from his dwelling-place whose arch or pillar meets me in the face titus or trajan's no tis that of time triumph arch pillar all he doth displace scoffing and apostolic statues climb to crush the imperial urn whose ashes slept sublime hundred and eleven buried in air the deep blue sky of rome and looking to the stars they had contained a spirit which with these would find a home the last of those who o'er the whole earth reigned the roman globe for after none sustained but yielded back his conquests he was more than a mere alexander and unstained with household blood and wine serenely wore his sovereign virtues still we trajan's name adore hundred and twelve where is the rock of triumph the high place where rome embraced her heroes where the steep tarpeian fittest goal of treason's race the promontory whence the traitors leap cured all ambition did the conquerors heap their spoils here yes and in yon field below a thousand years of silenced factions sleep the forum where the immortal accents glow and still the eloquent air breathes burns with cicero hundred and thirteen the field of freedom faction fame and blood here a proud people's passions were exhaled from the first hour of empire in the bud to that when further worlds to conquer failed but long before had freedom's face been veiled and anarchy assumed her attributes till every lawless soldier who assailed trod on the trembling senate's slavish mutes or raised the venal voice of baser prostitutes hundred and fourteen then turn we to our latest tribune's name from her ten thousand tyrants turn to thee redeemer of dark centuries of shame the friend of petrarch hope of italy rienzi last of romans while the tree of freedom's withered trunk puts forth a leaf even for thy tomb a garland let it be the forum's champion and the people's chief her new-born numa thou with rain alas too brief 115 egeria sweet creation of some heart which found no mortal resting-place so fair as thine ideal breast whate'er thou art or wert a young aurora of the air the nympholepsy of some fond despair or it might be a beauty of the earth who found a more than common votary there too much adoring whatsoe'er thy birth thou wert a beautiful thought and softly bodied forth One hundred and sixteen the mosses of thy fountain still are sprinkled with thine elysian water drops the face of thy cave guarded spring with years unwrinkled reflects the meek-eyed genius of the place whose green wild margin now no more erase art's works nor must the delicate waters sleep prisoned in marble bubbling from the base of the cleft statue with a gentle leap the rill runs o'er and round fern flowers and ivy creep One hundred and seventeen fantastically tangled the green hills are clothed with early blossoms through the grass the quick-eyed lizard rustles and the bills of summer birds sing welcome as ye pass flowers fresh in hue and many in their class implore the pausing step and with their dyes dance in the soft breeze in a fairy mass the sweetness of the violet's deep blue eyes kissed by the breath of heaven seems coloured by its skies One hundred and eighteen here didst thou dwell in this enchanted cover egeria thy all heavenly bosom beating for the far footsteps of thy mortal lover the purple midnight veiled that mystic meeting with her most starry canopy and seating thyself by thine adorer what befell this cave was surely shaped out for the greeting of an enamoured goddess and the cell haunted by holy love the earliest oracle 
119 and didst thou not thy breast to his replying blend a celestial with a human heart and love which dies as it was born in sighing share with immortal transports could thine art make them indeed immortal and impart the purity of heaven to earthly joys expel the venom and not blunt the dart the dull satiety which all destroys and root from out the soul the deadly weed which cloys 120 alas our young affections run to waste or water but the desert whence arise but weeds of dark luxuriance tears of haste rank at the core though tempting to the eyes flowers whose wild odours breathe but agonies and trees whose gums are poison such the plants which spring beneath her steps as passion flies o'er the world's wilderness and vainly pants for some celestial fruit forbidden to our wants Hundred and twenty one o love no habitant of earth thou art an unseen seraph we believe in thee a faith whose martyrs are the broken heart but never yet hath seen nor e'er shall see the naked eye thy form as it should be the mind hath made thee as it peopled heaven even with its own desiring fantasy and to a thought such shape and image given as haunts the unquenched soul parched wearied wrung and riven One hundred and twenty-two of its own beauty is the mind diseased and fevers into false creation where where are the forms the sculptor's soul hath seized in him alone can nature show so fair where are the charms and virtues which we dare conceive in boyhood and pursue as men the unreached paradise of our despair which o'er informs the pencil and the pen and overpowers the page where it would bloom again One hundred and twenty three who loves raves tis youth's frenzy but the cure is bitterer still as charm by charm unwinds which robed our idols and we see too sure nor worth nor beauty dwells from out the mind's ideal shape of such yet still it binds the fatal spell and still it draws us on reaping the whirlwind from the oft-sown winds the stubborn heart its alchemy begun seems ever near the prize wealthiest when most undone One hundred and twenty-four we wither from our youth we gasp away sick sick unfound the boon unslaked the thirst though to the last in verge of our decay some phantom lures such as we sought at first but all too late so are we doubly cursed love fame ambition avarice tis the same each idle and all ill and none the worst for all are meteors with a different name and death the sable smoke where vanishes the flame hundred and twenty five few none find what they love or could have loved though accident blind contact and the strong necessity of loving have removed antipathies but to recur ere long envenomed with irrevocable wrong and circumstance that unspiritual god and miscreator makes and helps along our coming evils with a crutch-like rod whose touch turns hope to dust the dust we all have trod hundred and twenty six our life is a false nature tis not in the harmony of things this hard decree this uneradicable taint of sin this boundless upas this all-blasting tree whose root is earth whose leaves and branches be the skies which rain their plagues on men like dew disease death bondage all the woes we see and worse the woes we see not which throb through the immedicable soul with heartaches ever new hundred and twenty seven yet let us ponder boldly tis a base abandonment of reason to resign our right of thought our last and only place of refuge this at least shall still be mine though from our birth the faculty divine is chained and tortured cabined cribbed confined and bred in darkness lest the truth should shine too brightly on the unprepared mind the beam pours in for time and skill will couch the blind hundred and twenty eight archers on archers as it were that rome collecting the chief trophies of her line would build up all her triumphs in one dome her coliseum stands the moonbeams shine as twere its natural torches for divine should be the light which streams here to illume this long explored but still exhaustless mine of contemplation and the azure gloom of an italian night where the deep skies assume One hundred and twenty nine 
hues which have words and speak to ye of heaven floats o'er this vast and wondrous monument and shadows forth its glory there is given unto the things of earth which time hath bent a spirit's feeling and where he hath lent his hand but broke his scythe there is a power and magic in the ruined battlement for which the palace of the present hour must yield its pomp and wait till ages are its dower 130 o time the beautifier of the dead adorner of the ruin comforter and only healer when the heart hath bled time the corrector where our judgments err the test of truth love soul philosopher for all beside are sophists from thy thrift which never loses though it doth defer time the avenger unto thee i lift my hands and eyes and heart and crave of thee a gift Hundred and thirty one amidst this wreck where thou hast made a shrine and temple more divinely desolate among thy mightier offerings here are mine ruins of years though few yet full of fate if thou hast ever seen me too elate hear me not but if calmly i have borne good and reserved my pride against the hate which shall not whelm me let me not have worn this iron in my soul in vain shall they not mourn 132 and thou who never yet of human wrong left the unbalanced scale great nemesis here where the ancients paid thee homage long thou who didst call the furies from the abyss and round orestes made them howl and hiss for that unnatural retribution just had it been but from hands less near in this thy former realm i call thee from the dust dost thou not hear my heart awake thou shalt and must One hundred and thirty three it is not that i may not have incurred for my ancestral faults or mine the wound i bleed withal and had it been conferred with a just weapon it had flowed unbound but now my blood shall not sink in the ground to thee i do devote it thou shalt take the vengeance which shall yet be sought and found which if i have not taken for the sake but let that pass i sleep but thou shalt yet awake 134 and if my voice break forth tis not that now i shrink from what is suffered let him speak who hath beheld decline upon my brow or seen my mind's convulsion leave it weak but in this page a record will i seek not in the air shall these my words disperse though i be ashes a far hour shall wreak the deep prophetic fulness of this verse and pile on human heads the mountain of my curse 135 that curse shall be forgiveness have i not hear me my mother earth behold it heaven have i not had to wrestle with my lot have i not suffered things to be forgiven have i not had my brain seared my heart riven hopes sapped name blighted life's life lied away and only not to desperation driven because not altogether of such clay as rots into the souls of those whom i survey One hundred and thirty six from mighty wrongs to petty perfidy have i not seen what human things could do from the loud roar of foaming calumny to the small whisper of the as paltry few and subtler venom of the reptile crew the janus glance of whose significant eye learning to lie with silence would seem true and without utterance save the shrug or sigh deal round to happy fools its speechless obloquy Hundred and thirty-seven but i have lived and have not lived in vain my mind may lose its force my blood its fire and my frame perish even in conquering pain but there is that within me which shall tire torture and time and breathe when i expire something unearthly which they deem not of like the remembered tone of a mute lyre shall on their softened spirits sink and move in hearts all rocky now the late remorse of love One hundred and thirty eight the seal is set now welcome thou dread power nameless yet thus omnipotent which here walks in the shadow of the midnight hour with a deep awe yet all distinct from fear thy haunts are ever where the dead walls rear their ivy mantles and the solemn scene derives from thee a sense so deep and clear that we become a part of what has been and grow unto the spot all seeing but unseen 139 and here the buzz of eager nations ran in murmured pity or loud roared applause as man was slaughtered by his fellow-man 
and wherefore slaughtered wherefore but because such were the bloody circus's genial laws and the imperial pleasure wherefore not what matters where we fall to fill the maws of worms on battle plains or listed spot both are but theatres where the chief actors rot 140 i see before me the gladiator lie he leans upon his hand his manly brow consents to death but conquers agony and his drooped head sinks gradually low and through his side the last drops ebbing slow from the red gash fall heavy one by one like the first of a thunder shower and now the arena swims around him he is gone ere ceased the inhuman shout which hailed the wretch who won 141 he heard it but he heeded not his eyes were with his heart and that was far away he recked not of the life he lost nor prize but where his rude hut by the danube lay there were his young barbarians all at play there was their dacian mother he their sire butchered to make a roman holiday all this rushed with his blood shall he expire and unavenged arise ye goths and glut your ire 142 but here where murder breathed her bloody steam and here where buzzing nations choked the ways and roared or murmured like a mountain stream dashing or winding as its torrent strays here where the roman millions blame or praise was death or life the playthings of a crowd my voice sounds much and fall the stars faint rays on the arena void seats crushed walls bowed and galleries where my steps seem echoes strangely loud 143 a ruin yet what ruin from its mass walls palaces half cities have been reared yet oft the enormous skeleton ye pass and marvel where the spoil could have appeared hath it indeed been plundered or but cleared alas developed opens the decay when the colossal fabric's form is neared it will not bear the brightness of the day which streams too much on all years man have reft away 144 but when the rising moon begins to climb its topmost arch and gently pauses there when the stars twinkle through the loops of time and the low night breeze waves along the air the garland forest which the grey walls wear like laurels on the bald first caesar's head when the light shines serene but doth not glare then in this magic circle raise the dead heroes have trod this spot tis on their dust ye tread 145 while stands the Colosseum, rome shall stand when falls the Colosseum, rome shall fall and when rome falls the world from our own land thus spake the pilgrims o'er this mighty wall in saxon times which we are wont to call ancient and these three mortal things are still on their foundations and unaltered all rome and her ruin past redemption's skill the world the same wide den of thieves or what ye will 146 simple erect severe austere sublime shrine of all saints and temple of all gods from jove to jesus spared and blessed by time looking tranquillity while falls or nods arch empire each thing round thee and man plods his way through thorns to ashes glorious dome shalt thou not last time's scythe and tyrant's rods shiver upon thee sanctuary and home of art and piety pantheon pride of rome 147 relic of nobler days and noblest arts despoiled yet perfect with thy circle spreads a holiness appealing to all hearts to art a model and to him who treads rome for the sake of ages glory sheds her light through thy soul aperture to those who worship here are altars for their beads and they who feel for genius may repose their eyes on honoured forms whose busts around them close 148 there is a dungeon in whose dim drear light what do i gaze on nothing look again two forms are slowly shadowed on my sight two insulated phantoms of the brain it is not so i see them full and plain an old man and a female young and fair fresh as a nursing mother in whose vein the blood is nectar but what doth she there with her unmantled neck and bosom white and bare 
149. Full swells the deep pure fountain of young life, where on the heart and from the heart we took our first and sweetest nurture, when the wife blessed into mother, in the innocent look, or even the piping cry of lips that brook no pain and small suspense, a joy perceives man knows not, when from out its cradled nook she sees her little bud put forth its leaves. What may the fruit be yet? I know not. Cain was Eve's. 150. But here youth offers to old age the food, the milk of his own gift. It is her sire, to whom she renders back the debt of blood born with her birth. No, he shall not expire, while in those warm and lovely veins the fire of health and holy feeling can provide great nature's Nile, whose deep stream rises higher than Egypt's river. From that gentle side, drink, drink and live, old man. Heaven's realm holds no such tide. 151. The starry fable of the Milky Way has not thy story's purity. It is a constellation of a sweeter ray and sacred nature triumphs more in this reverse of her decree than in the abyss where sparkle distant worlds o holiest nurse no drop of that clear stream its way shall miss to thy sire's heart replenishing its source with life as our freed souls rejoin the universe One hundred and fifty two turn to the mole which hadrian reared on high imperial mimic of old egypt's piles colossal copyist of deformity whose travelled fantasy from the far niles enormous model doomed the artist's toils to build for giants and for his vain earth his shrunken ashes raise this dome how smiles the gazer's eye with philosophic mirth to view the huge design which sprung from such a birth hundred and fifty three but lo the dome the vast and wondrous dome to which diana's marvel was a cell christ's mighty shrine above his martyr's tomb i have beheld the ephesians miracle its columns strew the wilderness and dwell the hyena and the jackal in their shade i have beheld sophia's bright roof swell their glittering mass in the sun and have surveyed its sanctuary the while the usurping moslem prayed 154 but thou of temples old or altars new standest alone with nothing like to thee worthiest of god the holy and the true since zion's desolation when that he forsook his former city what could be of earthly structures in his honour piled of a sublimer aspect majesty power glory strength and beauty all are aisled in this eternal ark of worship undefiled 155 enter its grandeur overwhelms thee not and why it is not lessened but thy mind expanded by the genius of the spot has grown colossal and can only find a fit abode wherein appear enshrined thy hopes of immortality and thou shalt one day if found worthy so defined see thy god face to face as thou dost now his holy of holies nor be blasted by his brow Hundred and fifty six thou movest but increasing with advance like climbing some great alp which still doth rise deceived by its gigantic elegance vastness which grows but grows to harmonize all musical in its immensities rich marbles richer painting shrines where flame the lamps of gold and haughty dome which vies in air with earth's chief structures though their frame sits on the firm set ground and this the clouds must claim hundred and fifty seven thou seest not all but piecemeal thou must break to separate contemplation the great whole and as the ocean many bays will make that ask the eye so here condense thy soul to more immediate objects and control thy thoughts until thy mind hath got by heart its eloquent proportions and unroll in mighty graduations part by part the glory which at once upon thee did not dart hundred and fifty eight not by its fault but thine our outward sense is but of gradual grasp and as it is that what we have of feeling most intense outstrips our faint expression e'en so this outshining and o'erwhelming edifice fools our fond gaze and greatest of the great defies at first our nature's littleness till growing with its growth we thus dilate our spirits to the size of that they contemplate Hundred and fifty nine 
then pause and be enlightened there is more in such a survey than the sating gaze of wonder pleased or awe which would adore the worship of the place or the mere praise of art and its great masters who could raise what former time nor skill nor thought could plan the fountain of sublimity displays its depth and thence may draw the mind of man its golden sands and learn what great conceptions can 160 or turning to the vatican go see laocoon's torture dignifying pain a father's love and mortal's agony with an immortal's patience blending vain the struggle vain against the coiling strain and gripe and deepening of the dragon's grasp the old man's clench the long envenomed chain rivets the living links the enormous asp enforces pang on pang and stifles gasp on gasp 161 or view the lord of the unerring bow the god of life and poesy and light the sun in human limbs arrayed and brow all radiant from his triumph in the fight the shaft hath just been shot the arrow bright with an immortal's vengeance in his eye and nostril beautiful disdain and might and majesty flash their full lightnings by developing in that one glance the deity 162 but in his delicate form a dream of love shaped by some solitary nymph whose breast longed for a deathless lover from above and maddened in that vision are expressed all that ideal beauty ever blessed the mind within its most unearthly mood when each conception was a heavenly guest a ray of immortality and stood star-like around until they gathered to a god 163 and if it be prometheus stole from heaven the fire which we endure it was repaid by him to whom the energy was given which this poetic marble hath arrayed with an eternal glory which if made by human hands is not of human thought and time himself hath hallowed it nor laid one ringlet in the dust nor hath it caught a tinge of years but breathes the flame with which twas wrought 164 but where is he the pilgrim of my song the being who upheld it through the past methinks he cometh late and tarries long he is no more these breathings are his last his wanderings done his visions ebbing fast and he himself as nothing if he was aught but a fantasy and could be classed with forms which live and suffer let that pass his shadow fades away into destruction's mass 165 which gathers shadow substance life and all that we inherit in its mortal shroud and spreads the dim and universal pall through which all things grow phantoms and the cloud between us sinks and all which ever glowed till glory's self is twilight and displays a melancholy halo scarce allowed to hover on the verge of darkness rays sadder than saddest night for they distract the gaze Hundred and sixty-six and send us prying into the abyss to gather what we shall be when the frame shall be resolved to something less than this its wretched essence and to dream of fame and wipe the dust from off the idle name we never more shall hear but never more o oh, happier thought can we be made the same it is enough in sooth that once we bore these fardels of the heart the heart whose sweat was gore 167 hark forth from the abyss a voice proceeds a long low distant murmur of dread sound such as arises when a nation bleeds with some deep and immedicable wound through storm and darkness yawns the rending ground the gulf is thick with phantoms but the chief seems royal still though with her head discrowned and pale but lovely with maternal grief she clasps a babe to whom her breast yields no relief One hundred and sixty eight scion of chiefs and monarchs where art thou fond hope of many nations art thou dead could not the grave forget thee and lay low some less majestic less beloved head in the sad midnight while thy heart still bled the mother of a moment or thy boy death hushed that pang for ever with thee fled the present happiness and promised joy which filled the imperial isles so full it seemed to cloy Hundred and sixty nine peasants bring forth in safety can it be o thou that wert so happy so adored those who weep not for kings shall weep for thee 
and freedom's heart grown heavy ceased to hoard her many griefs for one for she had poured her orisons for thee and o'er thy head beheld her iris thou too lonely lord and desolate consort vainly wert thou wed the husband of a year the father of the dead 170 of sackcloth was thy wedding garment made thy bridal's fruit is ashes in the dust the fair-haired daughter of the isles is laid the love of millions how we did entrust futurity to her and though it must darken above our bones yet fondly deemed our children should obey her child and blessed her and her hoped-for seed whose promise seemed like star to shepherd's eyes twas but a meteor beamed 171 woe unto us not her for she sleeps well the fickle reek of popular breath the tongue of hollow counsel the false oracle which from the birth of monarchy hath rung its knell in princely ears till the awe-strung nations have armed in madness the strange fate which tumbles mightiest sovereigns and hath flung against their blind omnipotence a weight within the opposing scale which crushes soon or late 172 these might have been her destiny but no our hearts deny it and so young so fair good without effort great without a foe but now a bride and mother and now there how many ties did that stern moment tear from thy sires to his humblest subject's breast is linked the electric chain of that despair whose shock was as an earthquake's and oppressed the land which loved thee so that none could love thee best 173 lo nemi navelled in the woody hills so far that the uprooting wind which tears the oak from his foundation and which spills the ocean o'er its boundary and bears its foam against the skies reluctant spares the oval mirror of thy glassy lake and calm as cherished hate its surface wears a deep cold settled aspect nought can shake all coiled into itself and round as sleeps the snake 174 and near albano's scarce divided waves shine from a sister valley and afar the tiber winds and the broad ocean laves the latian coast where sprung the epic war arms and the man whose reascending star rose o'er an empire but beneath thy right tully reposed from rome and where yon bar of girdling mountains intercepts the sight the sabine farm was tilled the weary bards delight 175 but i forget my pilgrim's shrine is one and he and i must part so let it be his task and mine alike are nearly done yet once more let us look upon the sea the midland ocean breaks on him and me and from the alban mount we now behold our friend of youth that ocean which when we beheld it last by calpe's rock unfold those waves we followed on till the dark eukes enrolled 176 upon the blue simplegades long years long though not very many since have done their work on both some suffering and some tears have left us nearly where we had begun yet not in vain our mortal race hath run we have had our reward and it is here that we can yet feel gladdened by the sun and reap from earth see joy almost as dear as if there were no man to trouble what is clear 177 oh that the desert were my dwelling place with one fair spirit for my minister that i might all forget the human race and hating no one love but only her ye elements in whose ennobling stir i feel myself exalted can ye not accord me such a being do i err in deeming such inhabit many a spot though with them to converse can rarely be our lot 178 there is a pleasure in the pathless woods there is a rapture on the lonely shore there is society where none intrudes by the deep sea and music in its roar i love not man the less but nature more from these our interviews in which i steal from all i may be or have been before to mingle with the universe and feel what i can ne'er express yet cannot all conceal 179 roll on thou deep and dark blue ocean roll ten thousand fleets sweep over thee in vain man marks the earth with ruin 
is control stops with the shore upon the watery plain the wrecks are all thy deed nor doth remain a shadow of man's ravage save his own when for a moment like a drop of rain he sinks into thy depths with bubbling groan without a grave unknelled uncoffined and unknown 180 his steps are not upon thy paths thy fields are not a spoil for him thou dost arise and shake him from thee the vile strength he wields for earth's destruction thou dost all despise spurning him from thy bosom to the skies and sensed him shivering in thy playful spray and howling to his gods where haply lies his petty hope in some near port or bay and dashest him again to earth there let him lay 181 the armaments which thunder strike the walls of rock-built cities bidding nations quake and monarchs tremble in their capitals the oak leviathans whose huge ribs make their clay creator the vain title take of lord of thee and arbiter of war these are thy toys and as the snowy flake they melt into thy yeast of waves which mar alike the armada's pride or spoils of trafalgar hundred eighty two thy shores are empires changed in all save thee assyria greece rome carthage what are they thy waters washed them power while they were free and many a tyrant since their shores obey the stranger slave or savage their decay has dried up realms to deserts not so thou unchangeable save to thy wild waves play time writes no wrinkle on thine azure brow such as creation's dawn beheld thou rollest now 183 thou glorious mirror where the almighty's form glasses itself in tempests in all time calm or convulsed in breeze or gale or storm icing the pole or in the torrid clime dark heaving boundless endless and sublime the image of eternity the throne of the invisible even from out thy slime the monsters of the deep are made each zone obeys thee thou goest forth dread fathomless alone 184 and i have loved thee ocean and my joy of youthful sports was on thy breast to be borne like thy bubbles onward from a boy i wantoned with thy breakers they to me were a delight and if the freshening sea made them a terror twas a pleasing fear for i was as it were a child of thee and trusted to thy billows far and near and laid my hand upon thy mane as i do here 185 my task is done my song hath ceased my theme has died into an echo it is fit the spell should break of this protracted dream the torch shall be extinguished which hath lit my midnight lamp and what is writ is writ would it were worthier but i am not now that which i have been and my visions flit less palpably before me and the glow which in my spirit dwelt is fluttering faint and low 186 farewell a word that must be and hath been a sound which makes us linger yet farewell ye who have traced the pilgrim to the scene which is his last if in your memories dwell a thought which once was his if on ye swell a single recollection not in vain he wore his sandal shoon and scallop shell farewell with him alone may rest the pain if such there were with you the moral of his strain end of canto the fourth part two end of child harold's pilgrimage by george gordon lord byron